Okay guys, so we're back again with another video today and in this video we're going to be doing another capture the flag uh, we're looking at the basic pen testing 2vm which you can download from vulnhub.com uh, it's another boot to root virtual machine and is a continuation of the basic pen testing series and our goal here is to remotely attack the vm gain root privileges and read the flag located at root slash flag text so again there's multiple um exploitation vectors on here that we can have a look at this is our virtual machine which we're going to be attacking and obviously we've got our Kali Linux environment here as well so I'll just open up a terminal first make it a bit bigger and now we will check to find the IP address of the machine that we're going to be attacking I'm just going to change into this directory first of all Okay, and to discover the IP of the machine that we're attacking, we can run netdiscover. So dash i, eth1 is my interface card, and then the range I want is 192.168.56.100. And we should see the result here, there it is. So that's the IP address of the machine we're going to be attacking, so 56.103. Now we have that, we can run our mmap scan. And we're just going to run the usual on this, default scripts, default versions, disable the ping, we want it verbose, extra verbose, and the IP address on there, and I'm just going to output the results to a text file, bp2.txt, and also an XML file, and you'll see why in the next step. So that scan's going to run now, and we can see already there's a few open ports here. We've got a couple of Samba ports, we've got a web server port, uh, we've also got SSH on there, and there's also Apache by the look of it. Okay, so we, to get it in a bit of a nicer format, we can run this command. And then once we've got that HTML file, we just have a look at that in Firefox. It just makes it a little bit easier to read. I always do this uh, so I can refer back to it as well in the web browser. Now, one thing I've just noticed with this is we've still got the host entry for that VTC sec from the basic pen testing one series. Check that video out if you've not already. So here we go, we've got a couple of uh, ports open here, we've got 22 SSH, open SSH 7.2 P2, we've got port 80 running Apache 2.4.18, we've got a couple of Samba ports here, 139 and 445, we've got Apache JServe on 8009 and we've got Apache Tomcat on port 8080. So let's have a look at this port 81 first of all, I'm just going to put the IP address of our target machine in here. Okay, so undergoing maintenance, please check back later. So the first thing I'm going to do is similar to the last video, I'm just going to run a uh, derb scan on this IP address. Just put the IP in here and we want to output that to uh, derb.txt. Okay, so we'll just let this run to see what it comes back with. Okay, so that was pretty quick. It's found a directory here called development, which we can take a look at here. Or slash development. And we've got an index here, we've got dev.txt. So I've been messing with that strut stuff, it's pretty cool, blah, 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 blah. It's a rest version of example. Okay, so you can see here SMB's been configured and Apache's set up as well on here. Let's go back and have a look at that j.txt. Okay, and this looks like uh, an entry for, so for j, I've been auditing the contents of Etsy Shadow to make sure we don't have any weak credentials. So this looks like a weak password for j. So we need to uh, do a bit of enumeration here. 
Uh, one of the things that I like to do for enumeration on these machines is run a script called enum for linux which we can use to enumerate Samba uh, shares. Okay so we can run this with the following command enum for linux dash a which is our IP address and pipe that to t enum for limit linux dot text where it will save our output as enum for linux dot text. So this will take a, a minute or so to run, just leave that running. While that's running I'm just going to save these uh, files here just in case we need them for anything later on. Okay, so now they're downloaded, let's just go back to our scan. Okay, so that's still going on. Let's just scroll up and have a look, see what it's found so far. Okay, so there's a couple of known usernames here that it's found. What else have we got here? Okay, we can see that it allows sessions using username and password. We can also see a couple of file shares here. We've got anonym, anonymous and IPC. And down just below here, you can see where it is uh, attempting to map the shares. So the first one, anonymous, is coming back mapping OK, listing OK. And this IPC share couldn't understand the response for that. So we'll just focus on the anonymous share. Let's just have a look down here, see if we can see any usernames. Okay, so we've got a couple of uh, local users that it's found here. A user called K, K A Y, and Jan. So we'll bear that in mind. Found a couple of other user groups here, local groups. Okay, so let's have a look at mapping one of these uh, file shares that we discovered earlier. So I'm just going to check what I've got mounted at the minute by running df -h. Uh, you can see I've already got this actually mounted. So I'm just going to unmount this and show you how to remount that. So let me just unmount it first of all, running new mount slash mnt. Okay, and then to go about uh, mounting this, uh, the command we can type in, you can see that's gone now. Uh, we can type in mount dash t. And it's cifs uh, double backslash. The IP address, the name of the share, which was anonymous. And we're going to mount it to the slash mnt folder. There we go. So just press enter on the password. We don't need any password for that. Okay, and if we just run df -h again, you can see there it is. It's mounted. Okay, so now we have uh, got that. Let's list the contents of the mount directory. And we've got a staff.txt file. Let's just take a look at that here. The announcement to staff, please do not upload non-work related items to this share. I know it's all in fun. This means you too, Jan. So again, we've got these two usernames, Jan and K. Okay, so I'm just gonna save that uh, staff.txt file in case we need it for anything else. So I took a copy of that into this folder here. Uh, let's have a look at using uh, Searchploit here to look at the open SSH vulnerabilities from earlier that we've seen. I'll try to find vulnerabilities, should I say, for the version that this uh, server's running. So we've got open SSH 7.2 P2. Let's just have a look, see if we can find anything for that. Okay, so there's a username enumeration script here for OpenSSH 7.2p2, which we could run. We already know uh, a couple of usernames, Jan and K, that we found earlier. So let's have a look at uh, brute forcing the password for Jan. See if we get anywhere with that. 
And to do that, uh, what we can do, we can use uh, one of the word lists that comes pre-installed in Kali Linux. And we can use Hydra to do so. So Hydra-L, uh, the username is Jan, uh, dash capital P. So the password list we want to use is user share word lists slash rockyou.txt. And then we want the IP address in here. Set the threads to four. Our SSH service, and we're going to pipe the output to results.txt. Okay, so I'm not going to run this command. I ran this earlier. It took me about 40 minutes or so to discover the password. So I've already got that results file saved. This is the command that you would run. Uh, to, do, to brute force the password for Jan. So let's just take a look at the results.txt file from earlier. And this is what it come back with before. It found the password for the username Jan and the password was Armando. So now let's try SSH in on as username Jan. So we've got SSH Jan at our IP address. And we're asked for the password, which we know is Armando, so we'll pop that in there. And now we are logged on as the user Jan, so let's uh, take a look around here. Let's just list out the contents here. So cd dash dash takes uh, dot dot sorry takes us to the home folder. Let's do a quick ls dash al. We can see two directories here, Jan and K. Let's have a look in K's directory, see if we've got uh, access to that. List the contents out. And we've got a pass.back file. Let's see if we can uh, check the permissions on this file, pass.back. So it's a regular, regular file, no read permissions. Let's have a look in the SSH directory. And it will list the contents of that. So let's just cat the IDRSA file. Okay, so what you're going to want to do here, what I did earlier, was I basically copy and pasted the contents of this file into a new file. I'll just highlight all of this. Copy that. And then what I did was I just did a nano k, actually this is uh, within the terminal itself, we want our, want our own terminal rather than on the box. So let's just open up a new terminal here. And nano k dash ssh, so I created this file k dash ssh basically copied in the contents of the uh, IDRSA file in here. I'll just show you that. Yeah, so there it is. So now we've got this file, we can actually run SSH to John to uh, crack this. Or convert it into a better format to crack it with, should I say. SSH to John, so K dash SSH, and we're going to output that to K dash login. Now again, I did this earlier, I've already got that file created. So I'm just going to uh, cancel out of that. So let's have a look at K login. Okay, so that is the uh, file with SSH to John as output, and we can then use John the Ripper to uh, crack the hash on this file. So to do that, you would just run uh, John and then K dash login. I already done that earlier, so I'm just going to show you the output from this. You can see here the password come back as beeswax. 
So now what we can do is we can try and log in as K via SSH and we know the password for K. So SSH dash I, I'll just quit out of this shell here. Just exit this, or just exit again. So SSH dash I, the username is K. It's dash SSH, we're gonna use that file. And then we want username K at 192.168.56.103. And we're prompted for the password, which is beeswax. Okay, so we're now logged on as K, as you can see. Uh, one of the things to point out here as well is if you do try SSH in on as K and you get a message saying unprotected private key file, you do actually need to change the properties on the K SSH file itself so that it is readable only by yourself as in this example here. Okay, so to do that, if you do get the unprotected private key file message, you can just do a chmod 400 and then K-SSH and that will set that file to readable only by yourself. So we've already got that, so I'm just gonna quit that. Okay, so switching back to this terminal where we've got our SSH uh, prompts here, we can do a quick uh, list the contents of the directory. We've got this pass.back file, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so here's the contents here. I'm just gonna copy this, which is a really strong password that follows the password policy. And then if we do uh, sudo-l, And we enter that password, I'll paste it in there. I'm just gonna paste that. Okay, and we can see here that that's come back with uh, K having all permissions here. She can run all commands on basic two box. So next we can just do a quick sudo su, which will give us the root access. And now if we change into the root directory, we should be able to get the flag. So cd slash root, we'll just list the contents of that directory, and there is our flag. So that is basically it for the basic pen testing two box. That is my method of getting in there. Uh, feel free to comment below and tell me if I've missed anything or if you have any alternate methods. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please do like, comment, subscribe and share the video. And I'll see you again soon. Thank you.